good evening all all right let's start so yesterday we were looking up to the analysis or bit of them right we would be going with ahead all right so i guess you have completed your quiz as well i see some of you have completed it all right so without wasting any time let's just start it so we'll be importing up the dependencies and we'll be loading the yesterday's data actually and then we'll be going with the stuffs all right let me just rename it So I have uploaded up the data sets actually what we will be taking up through so I have uh, given this on your classroom where you can find up the data so we'll be going with the first one first data what you can see 76.8 kb and again we'll be going with the second one as fast so let's just quickly start it so I'll put it my DA first of all today and that would be the read of this CSV file and I'll be taking the IPL1 data so it would be just 2008 to 17 and let's just say I'll be reading the complete data so I'm not taking any rows as well so that's simple I'll just show you the information of this so yeah we have a class pandas there range we have 300, 636 from 0 to 635 then we have the respective columns for all the column null values are there you can simply just see up the you know like the heat map if any null values exist in this column in any other columns we'll just show you sns dot heat map whether the df is a null value or not in very simple way you can see very minute null values you are having in there so heat map is nothing but the correlation between all the columns you are getting and in the columns you are trying to find that whether any null or any uh, you know ca you can say like any blank value is there or not so we see in like winner and the man of the match and something like we can find it I'll be changing the palette as well so you can just find it like in the heat map you can see the c map values so i'll be filling the c map with the i'll just say oranges so i'm sorry for this it should be o r a n g e s okay oh sorry it is a parameter error it should be c map yeah so you're getting it so this is the line where you actually this unnamed 17 you can see like completely brown that is nothing but the true value exactly so it states that this column is completely having the null value so i will be just dropping this column or else i'll be just simply deleting that simple as the v it's what is name unnamed 17. so this column has to be de deleted and we can check it to the head of the data i would say by the two data there uh, sir this column is permanently deleted or not yeah, like if you just check your DA, if you don't have any such values for this, so it is completely deleted. Okay, sir. Right. Meanwhile, if you are using drop value, then basically here you are deleting it. So if you delete anything, that variable will be completely deleted from the kernel. Now if you drop it, so you need to write drop. In that case, you need to define df.drop, then the unnamed, whatever the value it is. And then you also need to write up, okay, I'm just writing it like the column value. So inside this, you need to write the column value there. I'll make it as comment. And here you need to write the in place equals to true. Sorry, this is true. To basically remove up the values that exactly it will be working. Now, if you're simply using the delete one, you can just take it this simple. Okay, fine. Going ahead with this. Yeah. So in the DF, I want to just look on to the number of the uh, teams or the team which has won by the most number of runs in the complete year of 2008 and 2000 uh, till 2017. So we'll be just trying to find up most number of runs. So win by runs, basically we need to find the max of the win by runs column to exactly find it out. Okay. 
So what you'll do is just simple df of the when by runs and you'll try to find up the max. So 146 is the maximum value exactly. So we'll again locate it simple. You can just write a single line here df dot lock or you can just find the index maximum value as well. So you'll be just trying to find a df. Then you'll have a lock and then this value of when by runs you'll be taking equal equals to 146 or you can even put it like in the maximum one. Yeah, that's simple. So this is the match in 2017 played between MI and Delhi and we are having the winner MI win by 146 runs and this is like all the details of the match. Even like you can get a complete, you know, like series kind of thing. So this is to be done just a very simple. So we would need to find it just with one single value uh, or you can just print a series as well for this. So basically we are trying to locate it here or you can just find the locations. So this is the value what you are trying to get and you can find the overall winner team as well. Like if you want only the winner part, you can just grab it like this. If you want to see the winner. So this is the MI winner win by runs. If you want, you can place it that so like winner and win by runs. So this will be basically a multi column value. So you'll need to place it like this. So win by the runs and yep, MI won by 146 run. Very simple thing is it, okay? Now yesterday we were looking to a different data exactly. Now that data was simple as this one. That is so IPL matches 2008 to 2020. This is like completely where you have all the details of the respective, you know, like teams and the rest of the umpires as well. Like venue, the most common venue. We'll be looking to today like what are the most common venue and like what are the basically the results margin eliminator. Like we also seen the uh, we also saw the, like yesterday we saw the uh, player of the match. I guess so. If not, like we also saw like yesterday the toss decisions, right? So we will be today having all the reviews of that as well. So we'll be loading the data that would be PD dot the read and we would be having this as the IPL matches. So we'll go with the quartile as well again. So this is something like what we saw yesterday. That is your statistical description of your data exactly. Okay. I guess this is clear to everyone, right? So I'll be again, uh, going with the topics what we did yesterday that is most wins in the IPL then like count wins and all okay yesterday we saw the plottings I'm not going to go with the plotting now eliminator also we saw yesterday that how we can find the eliminator today we'll be going with the toss decisions basically that what like if the team is deciding like if the uh, team decision is to bat right so what is the winning percent of that particular team so we'll be making a code for that all right okay so let's just say for the toss decision. So basically what we are doing is we are trying to find up the teams from the data and we are trying to find the toss winner unique. So the teams who has won the toss basically are Royal Challenger, Bangalore, the CSK, the Rajasthan Royals, Mumbai Indians, Tekken Chargers, Kings, Knight, Punjab and like respective teams over there we are having in here. Right. So we'll make a code as very simple it is. Okay. And we'll try to make it as simple for the decision making. And that's it very easy. All right. Let me just write it. So we'll try to make a data frame first of all, and then we'll be, you know, like, uh, adding up the values or you can say like appending up the values there. So I'll be creating a decision making. So this will be the dependencies like if the team is, you know, like uh, opting for batting or if it is choosing to field, what is the percentage? Like if the team is choosing to field, what is the percentage that the team is going to win? Okay. Just a second. So we'll be simply making a data frame and let's just say that this is a data frame, right? Very simple. 
So we'll be naming the columns what we want now. The columns name would be as yeah, simple like I'll be taking the toss winner. So this would be the toss winner. Then I'll be taking the decision as well for the basically like with this data. Okay, I'll just show you again that what exactly your data contains on. So let's just make it down. And yeah, that's it. So data dot ahead simple. So you can see and uh, this data actually the method we don't want. So I'm not removing it for now. Yesterday we removed the method one. So we'll not be focusing on for that. All right. Okay. That's simple. Let me just plug in my charger. Okay. Thanks. All right. So we'll be taking the number of times the team is winning, right? Okay. Now, simple as we'll be creating two variables to enumerate the terms basically, right? Enumerate, I think you all know. If not, I'll be just showing the description to you that how exactly it works. So I'll be taking the element for here. So this is element is nothing but the number of teams we are taking from the here, like the, the teams what are uh, available here, what in the data set we are having in. Okay, that's great. Let's just have this enumerate function. So I guess this is clear to all. If not, it's simple like it returns an emirate object, basically combines of the things and in the iterable, same thing like. These are the basic things you do in the Python, right? Very simple. Okay, so we'll be enumerating the teams and we'll be assigning the variables to it. Now as simple, I'll be taking the temporary battings or the team who are batting and choosing to, you know, like for the respective, you know, for the batting teams, right? Or you can say for the fielding team. So we'll be creating temp bat and temp uh, field basically like as for the two variables you can say on right so let's just say batting team so would be the team bat like who choose to bat first of all so we'll be taking the data their hand will be taking the data and we'll be taking the toss winner from that and we'll be equating it with the element nothing like with the teams so if the toss winner is that particular team like let's say rcb so that would be basically an element so this is the element and you need to go with the boolean conditional like because you need to find up the two things okay where the dos decision is this team and is choosing to bat that is important right because then only we will be appending the data to the team batting okay so we'll take the team there we'll take a toss decision now toss winner if the element is there okay the toss decision should be equals to let me see if it is capital b or small b okay it's small b so it will be small b, that's it. Let me just copy this one and we'll be making the same for the fielding team. So team fielding with the say f i l d and just ahead in the case you need to write instead of the bat you need to write up the field I guess any fielding team is there let me just have a preview with this. guess any okay it's small f Sorry. Hmm. so you need to like go with this that's great okay so you have created basically a temp bat and a team uh, fielding okay now you'll be appending up the data that's simple so we'll be appending the data to decision making what we have made basically this so we need to create a dictionary first of all then only we can add the data directly to the data frame right so we'll write decision making is equals to decision making dot appending the datas and this would be our dictionary obviously so this would be the toss winner like all the parameters what we have written here so the toss winner data would be element the next is your decision yeah like make it clear that here you can just easily understand so decision would be like batting and the next is like the number of times the team is winning if it is choosing to bat so the number of times would be just simple as the team batting okay and we need to find the value counts as well or you can say just a simple count so team batting and the toss winner will be just taking it and we need to go for the count all right after it will be ignoring the index because it will be actually in an unsorted data so we need to write the ignore index values to be true 
the same we would be doing for the team you know like fielding and that will be appended in the same data actually so we'll be writing it here itself so toss winner would be the same things just here we need to change a bit and we'll be going with the visualizations then just have a look on here so that's all like toss winner team bat of this would be team fielding so here we have team bat equals to this okay That's it simple. Okay, let me just hit and run this. Here we have an, uh, this is the case. Let me just see the line number element. Okay, yeah. This should be equal equals. So we executed this. Let me just see on to the decision making. So we have, we have decisions, batting. Okay, let me go with the bat as well. So, we have an output here. Let me just have a look onto this. Uh, just a minute, let me just check it. Like what the errors we are getting in. No problems with that. Yeah, that's okay, right? So we have the team bat, team fielding, and that's very simple. Okay, fine. So decision making we are getting in here. Okay, I guess this is clear to everyone. Right? This man. If not, like you can just ask it like what we exactly. So I'll just explain you that what we are doing in here. The simple like what we are creating is a decision making variable. That is nothing but a data frame. We are entering up the columns. That is toss winner, the decision and the times. Okay, that's very simple. And we are taking two variables basically to enumerate the teams, basically just like going with the iterations. We are creating just again the two variables like team batting and the team fielding. Then we are, uh, you know, like just simple writing up the toss winner, equating with the element. Element is nothing but the number of the teams participating in the game, right? And that is if the team is a winner, if it, the team is a toss winner, then what is the decision of that team? So that should be batting actually because we are storing in the bat. And then same, we are going with the team fielding okay so exactly here we are just adding up the same thing with the team bat and all right so we see some sort of uh, nan here i just need to check it out what the problem is going on In just a minute let me read up the data again just give me a minute let me just check it out okay so we are getting nine in the toss winner. Okay, okay. Hold on for a minute. Hmm. We change the fields. Let me check the decision making. Still we are getting same thing okay have a review here so that's fine. okay fine so we are having the decision making right the same code is there right no such changes over there that simple enumerating is there nothing else so we just go with the same thing in the count and all so we can see here the toss winner if rcb is there is the toss winner decision is batting so rcb is winning for 24 times yesterday we had a look at what number of matches is played by the what number of teams right the winners so you can just check it out if we just simply go with the data and if we have the winner column and dot the value counts if we go with so yeah it should come yeah so we have mumbai indians like for 120 and also basically if mumbai indians is winning for 120 times so if mumbai indians is opting to bat there so 48 is the you know like what the values like uh, simple the team is winning and it's simple like for the fielding at 48 times it's same for that as well okay we need to change as well like i need to check it like of it. Ah, 
ratio i guess is to be changed yeah so 48 versus the 58 values are there so if the team is uh, opting for the fielding it is winning for 58 times if it is for batting it the team is winning for 48 times a very simple so this is like an analysis what you are trying to find it simple like i'll just explain you are creating the decision making variable you are taking up the columns you are enumerating the teams that's simple you are add making a you can say a dictionary and then you are adding it to the decision making that's very simple okay you sir, what, is, what is id sorry uh, what is use of id for, for enumerating loop? we are using it like for one by one the values we are taking that is exactly a series value you are taking from there so that's why we need another variable as well okay getting ahead with this now if we need to find up like with the data here let me just show you the head again so now with this if we want to find up the venues we are having actually like in the very df if you go with the df dot the values of city so you'll get the city values that city is nothing but the venues here exactly like what are the uh, respective venues or you can say the most common venues where we are having the matches. Okay, so the matches like we want to find the most five like five to ten common venues or like you can say on the toss mirror the number of times. The exactly the same thing what you are getting here if you want to plot it, right? If we want to plot this one, so we'll be just writing it. It's very simple. So see, we are using a cat plot, nothing but very simple count plot exactly. And we are taking the toss winner factor from the decision making what we have made. This is the decision making exactly. This one where exactly this is uh, this one, right? So this decision making is your data frame. You are taking uh, here, that is your uh, data, right? You are taking the hue is nothing but the factor from where, hue is nothing but like in the uh, matplotlib if you go with that, you will be taking it as label, okay? So in uh, Seaborn, we name it as hue semantic, okay? Then you have why it nothing but the number of times the team is winning. So just simple, like let me just again show you the decision head itself. So decision making dot the head of three. So we have these decisions and these times, right? So the team deciding to bat, winning for the number of times. So we have the bat and fields. This is the hue semantic exactly so that you can easily understand that what figure or what attribute you are taking in. So we have Royal Challenger Bangalore's. This is simple, like very easy. Okay, the next is like I want to uh, find up the kind basically that is uh, what kind of graph you want. So I need a bar graph. That's the height is this given over there. And that's very simple. Aspect ratio has been defined what ratio you want to you know like separate up the values and then we are uh, taking it as rotation equals 90 because if we don't take this one so the values all will be overlapping between the text value what you're having in okay the title we are just taking it and that's very simple graph of this okay fine so the this is nothing but a simple bar graph which just says you that if the number of teams are participating and they are choosing for batting or fielding what is the ratio exactly how they are winning in that's very simple okay i guess this is clear to everyone all right Next. Now, if you want to have this on the most common, or you can say the most famous venues, if you just want to see like what are the most common, uh, you can say the venues, we'll just have the value counts and we'll try to get it actually. Okay, simple. Let me just show you. If we just write it, the data dot or the venue column simple have this value counts so i'll take the first let's just say 10. so eden guardians we are having for 77 time for for the number of matches has been played up there okay then we have the ferosa kotlad for 74 and then recently like 1k day or 73 so we'll be taking a graph of this for the famous five and then like famous 10 and we'll get it like for eden gardens like simple again x factor what you need to plot so this is a bar plotting right x factor we are taking data of the venue well of the value counts for the first 10 values this is again the very simple first 10 head exactly and y is again but simple like this is a series what you will be getting so you are taking head of the 10 values right basically the first starting 10 values you are taking if it is y you'll be taking up the index numbers right like the data value counts of the venue and that is very simple the title again this and this and rotation you can just uh, basically this is the bar chart we are taking so we need not to have the rotations here because the text value will be just having very simple as to be you can even save it like uh, plt dot save fig okay that's it any doubts in between these two graphs if you are having you just simply write in the chat box i'll be just clearing it a graph okay very simple now 
let's just say if you want to see the man of the matches right simple again you can just have a very clear conceptions like using the matplotlib you can just find it again simple if you want to see the number of you know like the top 10 umpires so very simple just you change the parameters you just write it here let's just say umpire one if we are scrolling over the umpire area umpire one so the most common or oh, sorry here we need to chain in umpire right so when you count it you can replace these all things i'll just remove this all right you can get a good graph as well like if you are uh, making it a big one so very simple that to be plt dot a figure and that would be a fixed size and uh, you can make it to 20 cross 8 as guess yep so it's very clear graph of that you can get it like this you can get a lot of uh, visualizations as well like you can use the cat plot you can use the count plot you can go with the heat map you can go with the you know like with the, for the line plottings and the various things you are having in okay let's just go on the df let's just compare that if mumbai indians and we are having mi versus csk right so what is the chance like mi is winning over the csk and what is the chance for the csk is winning for mi that's simple i'll just show you the uh, you can say the code so simple like what you are trying to find is the games of the mi and game of the csk so mi i'll be just straight away taking as to be df of this the team one should be equal equals to mi or this you need to take in a tuple exactly the same i've been going with the team two as well so i'll be taking the team two factor and here the value should also be equals to mi that's very simple this will be the mi i need to check up the shape so MI has played 157 games there in the complete data set of 2008 to 2017. And what is the number of, uh, you know, like for the matches the MI is winning, we can also check like for the win of MI. Win MI would be just simple equals to DF where you have the winner and we just straight away taking it as the MI. So the win of MI dot the shape. So MI is winning 92 over the 17 and the simple you can find the MI percent that is win MI on the shape of 0 divided by MI dot the shape of 0 basically taking up the datas and then finding the percentage of that same you can go for the CSK as well. Uh, this is the MI winning percentage you can say has to be 58.59 percent we can just simply round it off to you know like one, one single value that's like 58.6 percent of winning percentage there for the MI now that depends if you are taking on the factors now simple like I have taken a toss decision you can even take other more factors as well like from which team the team is playing right very simple that's a like for the visualizations you go with actually and you can get a heat map as well. You can get a pair plot for that. Very simple. Okay. So we have a lot of data exactly. This is very simple analysis actually you are doing with the IPL. Okay. Just need to try to understand of the features that are important. Okay. You can even find, I'll just show you that what all things are there in the other data set. That says DF2. I'll just show you this one. So P dot the read CSV. And this is the data ball by ball. Exactly what there is in data. I'll just show you DF2 dot head. So this is having actually a lot of columns as you can see here. So bowling team, the batting team, the extras, if the team, like if the team is batting, right? What number of extras is getting like who is a fielder, player dismissed or not, dismissal kind, what is the dismissal kind as well, is a wicket, is a boundary. So you can find that basically that the, this uh, data is exactly of 2008 to 2020, right? So you can find like if the bowler is this bowler, right? What is the number of wickets this bowler has taken? right simple like you can just uh, score of the is wicket one and you can find like wicket is greater than zero if the wicket is greater than zero you can just find it like what number of wickets it is having it's very simple like if the df is there df2 and if you're going with this a bowler right bowler equal equals to what is the name let me just take this copy yeah so this number of matches this bowler uh, basically has played here in this data set right in the number of matches you're getting in 
like the, uh, you can say the batsman on strike against uh, like whom he like, he's batting on there okay that's simple and we need to find up the is wicket so is wicket simple of this so this is like the is wicket and simple like of the sum if you take uh, the number of wickets here is having for the ones very simple as for the df2 so okay, okay. we'll take the another baller as well just for a scrolling now and that's simple dot the unique and this is the last one we are going with so let me just take any one baller let's just say pure shavla so here simple as to be we need to find up this what's the sum 164 wickets very simple so you can make functions as well where you can go through with every of the ballers what you're having in so these are basically the respective ballers you're having now you can just take it okay so if i take the top 50 ballers here like with the value counts of the top 50 ballers so or top you can say like 10 ballers so top 10 ballers are there like this so number of matches played by Harvajan Singh here is given like 3, 4, 5, 1. If you just simply look onto the DF2 shape, how many numbers we So you're having a lot of rows you can see on across 18 columns. So that's a huge data actually. Okay. Out of this, so you can simply make a function where you'll be just grabbing out the complete baller wickets or baller. You're going to like simple, I'll make a baller function where I'll be just taking this one value counts data. So I'll uh, name it as like ballers, B O W. That's a bit of bonus. Yeah, that's simple. That's simple. Like for I in the bowlers, we'll be just printing the value of I and we'll be having a gap as well so that it would be actually we are taking the 10 bowlers data, right? So simple has to be a slash N. And next we would be just printing this series exactly. This is nothing but the baller value would be printed here. The number of wickets the baller is taking. So this is clear like instead of the baller, baller just like this baller is equals to. Now here we'll be just taking at the very simple that should be i. So df of 2 the baller is e equals to i and that's like his wicket. Okay, that's fine. Now with this sum will be printed here and we'll have a look on this. run it so bow is not defined we need to run it there like this copy yep and just paste it so we have three four five one for the zero like the number of uh, teams i guess like i is getting to be there df2 of df2 baller equals to i so as we got of some okay i need to find up the df2 as well okay no problem i'll give you the overview here okay so we are ha having adjust here okay you'll be getting an introduction with this right so i guess if you have any doubts just uh, write it down in the chat box okay and let's just listen to sir now right so if you have any doubts you just you can just write on the chat box okay all right thank you Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, 
Hello everyone. So today we are very pleased to welcome Mr. Ajay Singh Rajawal to our live session. And it is truly an honor for all of us to have sir with us. Ajay sir is a graduate in information technology with a little garnish of management via MBA specialized in international business. He is the founder of two startups that have now been successfully sold to MNCs for future wealth and investment. He has been serving the nation to boost the innovation ecosystem in our country. Now, let us all allow Sir to enlighten us with a few insights about himself and his career. Thank you, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you for this uh, like quick introduction. And I was, uh, I think, in the last fifteen minutes, I just saw the session that uh, on data analysis or something like that. To be uh, very clear, like I'm not not that much techy. that can understand this uh, language that is python but yes like uh, while working with uh, the startups and the young innovative minds at ministry of education innovation cell i found that like uh, the things are changed a bit the things that you were learning today was i think it's going to be a future of it not just a programming or not not just a a piece of code it's actually Uh, the decision of uh, the nation some decisions of uh, politics decision of uh, uh, getting acquiring some uh, big shares depends on this particular topic so as far as this uh, uh, entire session was concerned i think in the last 15 minutes i realized somehow the nation is uh, heading towards in the right direction and the people like you were just writing questions over there in the chat box i've seen and uh, how dedicatedly like for one hour for half an hour you have uh, dedicated your time to learn these things really it gives me a goosebumps that i during our time in 2011 and 12 when i was graduated we not having these kind of resources at that time but certainly yes you, you are having and uh, it's really good to see that you all are like getting advantage of this pandemic uh, going digital in you know, our learning to learn new things so that was a crisp of like my experience that time last 15 minutes come back to like uh, i'm serving right now in the ministry of education innovation cell here in delhi and uh, i usually see like particularly in this particular domain of uh, like related to python or data analytics i think in so many hackathons that we conducted so far like smart india hackathon and india asia hackathon i've seen good talents coming up related to the data analytics and uh, Uh, working on the things that actually uh, very crucial to find out the data from web. Uh, let's me let me just take an example. I think uh, a month back, uh, uh, one startup was deployed. So that uh, startup was in uh, uh, the data analytics. Like they can analyze the data while uh, getting from stock market, like from where the fraud is going on. So they have put in some kind of algo and so at that time I realized. the stream is having a really a good strength and yes if uh, we will be keep moving in this space like we are in very small podium right now like it's a very small podium uh, like the tx webinar uh, it's a it's a just a podium where interested one are coming in but when you will be on the bigger podium the way goes through this one only once you will be enabling yourself in this data analysis and uh, uh, the latest technologies that rely on uh, uh these data techniques filtering even though i don't know that much of terms but still yes uh, today when i saw that uh, how this uh, um, batting structure and uh, how that data was fetching out i was really happy and i really proud of you all of you that were just present in this webinar that you're learning something that nation needs you're learning something that world needs so if you are <laughs> choosing this uh, particular domain as your career choice i think 
it's going to be a none of less a better opportunity for us to like explore more opportunities for you guys because like you know like there's so many hackathons will come in in future uh innovation cell is dedicately working on uh, conducting these kind of hackathons so that we can solve our internal problems first so many you know that so many ministries so many departments so many units of uh, government system and administration is lacking this particular thing that is a data administration data um, scrutiny or something like that so if we will be getting these kind of manpower these kind of ideas these kind of uh, startups i know like some of you might be thinking like why we are uh, thinking of this uh, like talking of startups here guys no no one knows like uh, whatever you are making is going to uh, make a bigger change in future might be you are going to uh, establish a next big mnc in the data analytics related to ipl or something just to uh, stop this uh, betting and all by introducing something new uh, through your approach so we are looking forward for these kind of new things and uh, certainly yes this is not our first meeting uh, later on i'll look forward to see you guys as a participant in the hackathons that uh, ministry of education innovation cell is going to conduct and later on I would like to thank each every one of you who have given your time to listen to me even though I was just listening to you for only for 15 minutes but yes whatever I have seen whatever I felt at that time I clearly mentioned here thank you Tiak team for organizing this webinar thank you sir and uh, I think uh, in future also if anything needed from my side I'll be always available though I'm not that much techy like you guys but yes uh, we lost some hairs because uh, we got some experience as well so from our experience you can learn and uh, from uh, conducting these kind of webinars i think i also learned few things today so thank you thanks and thank you everyone present here looking forward to meet you guys in the bigger podium just uh, just to pass through this small podium and uh, in future i think uh, that will be not a, a bad, big thing i'm going to say on this particular platform guys you are doing a great job Thanks so lot, many sir. of uh, um, young young engineering graduates actually uh, they are scared of these uh, terms of data analytics and all like i was scared of but yes if you are giving your 15 minutes 10 minutes or half an hour on this particular session certainly it's going to be a fruitful in future thank you thanks and thank you everyone who is present here it's really good to see you guys working so hard at that time thank you thank you sir for sharing your time So guys if you are having any doubts you can just write in your chat box If you guys are having any doubts you can write in your chat box guys Yes you write the questions So I see a question from Satyam Kumar. I have a question: Data analytics or data science, which is best? Basically, data analytics is something like what are the factors we are using in the data science. So I prefer that you go with the data science because you'll be learning with some libraries, which will be helpful for you for data analytics as well. So data science is actually a main domain you can say on where you go with the data analytics. So for like uh, choosing the best one is like data science you can go. right because inside that you will be learning up the data analytics let me just scroll on the things what we have learned today right simple like what we have done we have went through the finding up the number of like the most top umpires which very simple actually you created a plot and then you just try to find out the bar, bar plot as well very simple added to this you went through the venues you tried to find up the toss decisions like of the team if the uh, team is deciding to you know like for the batting then what is the ratio the team is winning and what is the ratio like the team is losing up the matches Yes, any doubts for there? Write in the chat, please. Well, I see questions from there as well. As a fresher, it is fruitful to start up with a career in science. Toss decision graph. Toss decision graph. Yep. Okay, I'll show you again. From where you got this? Because I was trying to analysis VI for my project, I could not. No problems. Okay, for this like graph or uh, sorry for the data, if you want, you can retrieve it from the classroom that has been shared in your WhatsApp group. Okay, or else the drive link has also been shared to you. 
Well, I see a question from there. Can we patent any algorithm that enables organization to show external data leakers, anything that detects data leaks? Yeah, we can go with like how exactly classifications we go with the Twitter one for the Twitter analysis, we can go with that as well. For finding up the algorithms, we can apply the naive bias there to find it. I see a question Kisi uh, that is something uh, asking from Satyam Kumar for what exactly? Uh, let me see your complete message. Toss decision graph you are saying. Okay. Toss decision graph. Sure. You can get it actually. You can use the C1 factor directly or you can use the meat plot. Okay. The matplotlib as well. All right, guys. That's a wonderful session from your side as well. Okay. That's fine. Rest of the things and rest of the informations, if you want to go ahead with this, you can get up the data and you can fetch up all the respective things in your WhatsApp group as well. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you.